Yeah, as you just heard there, many families here in Georgia rely on the sales tax holiday to buy things like school supplies, notebooks, that sort of thing. Also, many businesses, some of them here in this plaza, rely on it as well. So we went to the state capitol to find out just who does benefit. CBS 46 was on a mission to find out where the money from the now scrapped sales tax holiday is going. I was hoping to speak with you regarding the sales tax holiday. I have nothing to do with it. That's the answer from State Senator Jack Hill. He's the chairman of the State Appropriations Committee, which helps allocate money in the state budget recommended by the governor. After all, families love getting a break and not paying sales tax. But is it really the big deal you think it is? The Georgia Retail Federation, which represents big box chains and mom and pop shops, thinks so. And we see that as, a, as an advantage and something that's well needed for families who you know, are struggling. Shop owners seem to like it. What we found out is that consumers, when they save that amount of money, they go in and buy secondary items that they may not have bought originally. Low-income people don't participate the same way as middle and upper-income people on those sales tax holidays. Georgia State economics professor Dr. David Showquist says struggling families have limited cash flow. So he says studies have shown they're not buying more overall. They're just buying earlier or later to coincide with the sales tax holiday. In our search for answers, we found State Senator Mike Dugan, who was willing to sit down and speak with us on camera. It goes into the, the general fund, but typically how it works, and it has for uh, five years that I've been here, is that education gets the, the by far the majority of, of the spending from the state. Professor Showquist says economists estimate the state tends to lose 8 to 10 percent of sales tax collections during sales tax holiday months. It may not be a huge deal uh, when we're looking at numbers wise, but it's a huge deal to somebody. As for our encounter with State Senator Hill. Can I talk to you about where the money is going? And Chairman Jack Hill did end up getting back to us. He referred us to State Senator Chuck Huffstetler. And we spoke to State Senator Chuck Huffstetler, and he told us that he's hoping that that money is going to go towards paying for teachers' raises. But he said nothing in the state constitution guarantees that. One more thing, out of the estimated $70 million take, half of it would go towards the state, half of it would go towards cities and counties. That's the very latest from Atlanta. Giovanna Dierfik, CBS 46 News. If this proposal becomes law, this fee would be charged to personal wire transfers that go out of state. I want to stress it would not apply to business transactions. The question is, is this a good idea for the government to be doing this to generate money for the state, or is it targeting immigrants who send money abroad? Raimundo Ramirez works at the taco market in DeKalb County. He says 15% of his income goes to help his parents in Mexico through money transfers every couple of weeks. Uh, Ramirez says it's very important because that's how I support my mom and dad. But if a new proposal in Georgia becomes law, on the $200 he usually sends, that would be a flat $10 fee because it's under $500. It's 2% on anything above that amount. Para Honduras está 23, 15. Elizabeth Hiram has two reasons for sending money, her mom and her daughter who are in Honduras. I asked her if she thought the proposal was targeting Latinos. Por supuesto que se está Hiram says, nosotros, of course, they're focusing on us. No creo. But Ramirez disagrees. He says, I don't think so. Truthfully, I don't. And according to Republican State Representative Jeff Jones, who plans to sponsor the bill, this plan worked well in Oklahoma. He estimates that it could generate as much as $100 million in revenue for Georgia. It's really going to slow business down, to tell you the truth. Uh Araceli Toro, the clerk at the wire transfer store, says you may be surprised at who's getting money transfers these days. And we started getting more people to send to India, to Ethiopia, to Ghana. Okay. And even though the money Ramirez sends helps his dad with food and medicine, he believes the fee would benefit the state and Latinos through reinvestment. He says, it would help them economically. And there are many Latinos studying here. And Representative Jones says the fee is fully refundable when a person files their Georgia State personal income taxes. Now, according to the representative in Oklahoma, few Oklahomans claim that tax refund. One more thing, it still needs to be introduced in the next legislative session. 
Reporting live from DeKalb County, Giovanna Dierpik, CBS 46 News. According to Symantec, over the past eight years, 7.1 billion identities have been exposed. Now, to put that into proper perspective for you, that's the equivalent of everyone in China having their identity compromised multiplied by five. Cuba, Cuba cloth, I believe. What is it? Peter Piro went from collecting beer cans and baseball cards at the age of eight to this, selling all kinds of collectibles at his shop. Triumph Tessie. He loves dealing with the old, but admits that keeping up with technology and new data systems for business can get his head spinning. It's, it's kind of overwhelming. We never know what, what to trust online. It's not just hard for mom and pops. Symantec reports that the number of breaches for the big outfits is also steadily growing. So when they actually steal the information from, let's say, a company that houses your social security number and your name, they're actually matching it up to stuff in Facebook or any of those companies and trying to match it up and get as much data as they can. Symantec says the cases with more than 10 million identities exposed grew from 11 in 2014 to 15 in 2016. Even though the number of identities exposed dropped by half in 2015, it doubled the following year to 1.1 billion. I would say 50% of the businesses in Atlanta, small businesses, don't even have a firewall. So it goes directly into their network, and a hacker can help themselves. Do you have a firewall? Um, I, I did, but I don't know if it's still active or... Well, a computer crash a couple of years ago made Piro switch back to ringing up sales the old-fashioned way. I've actually gone back to just, you know, doing the handwritten receipts. And while others are grappling with new security threats, we spot an old-school Apple II desktop for sale at his shop. Now a collectible. And our cybersecurity expert, Angel Martinez, says that if you're the average person who loves social media, you really do need to limit what kind of information you put on there. Don't put what school you attended. Don't put where you live. He says you should just limit it to your name. Reporting live from Chambly, Giovanna Dierpik, CBS 46 News.